as we we all know and what we're, what we're here for, uh, your pitch deck is really the window to, to your funding. And there are probably a million things or a million reasons uh, why your company is great, um, but investors and the people on the receiving end of, of your pitch can only remember a few things uh, of, of those, and uh, especially after a short presentation. So today we'll dig deep into what it takes to create a solid and memorable presentation that pitch deck that, uh, that will get people a good snapshot of your business as, as well as uh, the structures um, and what must be included, what mistakes to avoid, or rather what rules to follow. And uh, we'll use a very well-known example, uh, which is uh, Uber's uh, 2008 pitch. Once uh, when they came in to disrupt a, the market and create pretty much a, their, their own category and, um, and create a new way for mobility as, as, as we know it. So, to start with, we'll look at the content uh, of which we'll put in each slide, the visual factors, as well as um, my attempt to replicate this in a short, uh, short, short span of time. So before we even get started, let's talk uh, a little bit about structure and, uh, and about the design and conveying idea. So the structure of every pitch deck pretty much um, doesn't expand more than 10 to 12 uh, slides because really your audience only has about five to eight or nine takeaways or key facts about your company. And in fact, most pitch decks actually follow pretty much the same uh, structure or look the same in terms of, of, uh, of the content that, that will be presented. And uh, really it's the storytelling and your potential that really separates the, the great from, from the good. So, I mean, obviously what you'll encounter are two main challenges and, and that really is, uh, and what, which we'll have to balance, which is really being able to explain and, and convince. So um, without further ado, here's our agenda. It's very simple. We'll start with the structure, the mistakes, and uh, we'll try to touch upon the unexpected wins of companies that uh, haven't presented, you know, the best, uh, the best ones, but um, but they present uh, some traits that uh, that make them win. So let's talk about structure. Let's talk about problems. Um, actually, before we even get into, in, in, into the problems, I think that. Um, let's talk about what the structure really is, right? So uh, of course you'll have your title slide and that will include all, all your um, basics, but you'll go into the problems, the solutions, your business model, the underlying magic or the tech and the secret sauce that, that, that builds uh, your products. And then you'll move on to the go-to-market strategy, how successful you're, you're at it and an overview of the competition, uh, rather not an overview, but a detailed uh, snapshot of the competition, your team and the key players, the projections and current state of, of the company, as well as uh, closing with your funding needs and next steps, which is a very, very neglected slide by, uh, by a lot of teams, so we'll, we'll, we'll go over. So the problem slide, right? So Here's where um, you start to present the world in which we live in and why it sucks in a, in a nutshell. Explain to your investors the pain that you're alleviating. And here's where a lot of people already go wrong looking for the solution or quoting uh, consulting studies about the future and the size of, of the market in the future. And really it's sold now. And if, if we look at Uber and, and how they did it back in 2008, when let's backtrack a little and remember days of uh, the yellow cabs and uh, this is uh, almost pre iPhone or just as, uh, as the iPhone uh, was being launched, uh, it's the Blackberry days and what they, their, the problem that they were presenting was very simple. It was that uh, the current state of, of the caps in 2008 was that they are using, people are using 
and cats are using this aging and inefficient technology. They were relying on, on radio dispatch, if, if you still remember that. And there's like no two-way communication. I mean, obviously um, the cars were uh, the typical car from Victoria, which is uh, known to be a gas guzzler. Plus um, it was, they also didn't have uh, proper GPS coordination between the client and the driver and uh, the significant fares, of course, as, as you remember, as Uber was um, also launching, was launching the, the initial target market was New York, right? Uh, a place where it's well known for, for the prices. So now you've presented your problem. We, now it's time to explain why you're really the, the painkiller that of what you just presented. And only, here's where you'll only show the essentials of, of the solution or, or your product. Uh, here's where you answer the W questions. Why is your product great? Um, who needs it? What is it? And here's where you try to avoid um, live demos and, and all that. Um, there's a lot of things that can go wrong with with the live demo. There's, it's not wrong to do it, but it's risky. And there's a lot of ways to explain the product. And if uh, you choose to look at Uber's pitch deck, they did it in a, in a very simple way in just a few layman terms uh, and a few uh, steps. So essentially what you want to do is make sure that the everyday person could understand and the expert that's uh, on the other side would be convinced. Um, and of course, ensuring that your solution solves the problem that you, that, that you just uh, talked about. So uh, for Uber, it was pretty simple. It, it was just a couple of points. So fast and efficient on-demand car service, convenient, con the convenience of a cab in NYC, plus the experience of a professional chauffeur in San Francisco and New York, plus uh, automated, dispatch, automated dispatching uh, that reduces the wait time and an optimized fleet with incentivized uh, drivers. Um, and this is how they presented how it worked. It was a simple slide with a couple points and that's how you get their attention. So uh, one, -click, one click car service, must be a member to use the service, not hail from the streets and guarantee pickup, pick up, which, which was something that was already a major downside and it still is uh, for those who continue to use cabs. Um, and that's how they get the attention. So, I mean, going back to the product demo, uh, I see that a lot of teams are still using screenshots. And I think that this is something that, that is an issue because when you're using a screenshot, you are including things that are illegible, uh, that are hard to understand. It's not simple, it's cluttered, it's not obvious. So uh, I would avoid this uh, at all costs. So then you move on to the differentiate, key differentiators that, that, uh, that, um, that make you different, right? So you got their attention and we start moving into how we're going to make money slides, right? So here's the, the business model, the key differentiators. So for, for Uber, it's pretty simple. It's the one-click hailing, the members only, the optimized fleet, easier than calling a cab. And basically you explain who pays you, what are your channels of distribution, your, your gross margins. And in general, um, you want to stray away from not tried and tested or these unique uh, business models that uh, um, could become a scarier proposition for, for, for the person on, on the other side. Um, and here's where you want to also do some name dropping. Um, so if you can also use some of your traction, if you have traction or what you've accomplished so far in terms of showing revenue uh, or number of users or number of customers, um, you might want to do so because these, these KPIs are uh, something that, that's going to give you some relevance. Uh, then you go into the underlying magic. So what is this? This is where you describe your technology, your secret sauce, the magic behind the product or the service that, that, that you're 
the, the year behind. And as you can see here, I tried to basically replicate what Uber did. And uh, it was pretty simple. This is uh, pretty much what, how they had described it. Um, essentially mobile phones plus intelligent scheduling using applications for iPhone, BlackBerry. And um, yeah, they also were uh, using the fact that uh, they would include this in terms of payments and uh, tracking and, and all that. Then you move on to the other part of how you're going to make money. <laughs> so this is how you're going to give your investors a sizable return, right? So it's your market, how you, um, this is where, where a lot of teams go wrong. And basically they start by stating the total market size of, of your industry that they found in some sort of Gartner or, or in some sort of uh, um, market research off the shelf. And here is where I would definitely suggest to rather rely on your own business model and, and define a bottom-up potential uh, for your target market and uh, try to get as close to an addressable market size as, as, as possible. Um, and this is actually what, how Uber presented, presented it back in the day. And it was, as a matter of fact, a very... Um, broad approach. Um, there were some other slides in, in which they also presented some, um, some cases in terms of what the worst case scenario is, a relatively uh, standard scenario and a best case scenario. And this is uh, what I would definitely recommend in, in case of using a, uh, uh, not a, instead of not going for a bottom up Approach. So then you move on to your target market where you describe how you're, you're going to reach your customers and uh, how you're going to use your market and sales, marketing and sales to, to acquire them. How will you reach them? How will you get the word out for your company? What will it cost? Are you going to break the bank or not? Hopefully you won't. <laughs> and what have you already tested? And this is actually a very speculative um, slide for a lot of teams. Um, so this is more about convincing your audience that you have an effective go-to-market strategy and you're not going to break the bank while trying to get there. Now, here comes an interesting one. So here's your, co your competition slide, right? So here's where you want to let the use of the let the investors know that there is competition. There's no way there isn't competition. If there's no competition, there's no market. So <laughs> your job is to show effectively how you differentiate from the competition. What makes your company better than the rest or superior? How are you going to outperform the rest? And and whether that competitive competitive advantage is actually sustainable. So typically, you want to use a matrix like I have created here. I mean, mine is extremely basic, but essentially, uh, in my example, what I'm trying to show is where Xara stands in terms of, of our competition and and our uh, and our market. So. Uh, for those who are, I know that I, I saw a couple of our power users in our, in our, um, in our chat at the very beginning, and uh, you might even recognize uh, this landscape. So we have on one axis, the, I guess, the simplicity of creation versus creation for pros. And the other axis, you'll have how much of uh, Design, how much design freedom you have. So if we look at the, at the bottom part, you have the creation for pros and you have a lot of different tools like the Adobe Suite, you have uh, Illustrator, you have InDesign, great tools if you know how to use them and full design freedom for you and for your team. The only issue with, the, with these tools is that typically for most teams that are used by, by one person, the pro, which doesn't allow for much um, for much freedom in terms of the business user, and it's 
isolates or creates more of a siloed approach for um, the solution in the team or business as a whole. Then if you move up, if you want to move into simpler creation and in, in integrating uh, your design system into the team, you have tools like Figma. Figma is, is a fantastic tool that uh, allows the, the pro designers to work with uh, other business stakeholders and include them in the process. However, the one who still holds the key to the cast castle is the designer. It doesn't quite uh, allow you to do simple design, designs yet, um, but it builds on teams and, and all that. Then if you move on to the other side of the spectrum, you have um, tools uh, in the likes of Canva where creation is extremely simple. You have very last mile content creation. However, the, pro the, the issue with, with these tools is that um, they are last mile. So you are subject to availability of templates or availability of, the, of, of design components that allow you to drag and drop. Now, what's, uh, for example, if we look at Xara and Xara Suite um, as a whole, we have a plethora of powerful tools uh, that are packaged into one. So you have on one side the power of uh, tools such as InDesign or Illustrator that work alongside the EC to business user tools uh, as such as Sarah Cloud, where the user can um, customize everything and integrate with uh, with that with that of the designer. You also have things uh, that facilitate that, such as uh, digital asset management, um, which allow you to continuously create or build upon the uh, latest and best version of your of your documents. So that's how I would uh, build a competition slide, for example. Now, moving on to the team, you'll want to definitely, some see this as, as a slide that, that's ir irrelevant or perhaps not as, uh, as, import as important, but you'll want to describe who the key players on your management board are, who, uh, who are your major players, and you shouldn't be afraid of showing a team that has that lacks something because every startup or every business has some hole it's 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 impossible to have um a an all-star um an all-star team right from the get-go um as you grow um as you grow things change and and, and you and uh what really matters is uh to show that you're willing, right? Uh, and, and why you already got there. So your team already has the potential. So it's not, you're already in front of them. So if you got there, it's because the, there is a potential there. So lastly, almost lastly, there's your, your forecast, right? So here's where you'll want to do a bottom-up forecast and include your long sales cycles, seasonality, uh, make sure that people understand that um, the underlying assumptions of your part of your park of, uh, of your forecast is important as 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 well as the numbers that that you're uh, getting. Um, otherwise, it's only assumptions and hy hypotheses, and um, people smell bull from from miles away. Um, and last but not least, so you'll also want to show your future roadmap and and where you stand. Uh, but last but not least is your funding and next steps. And this is a slide that a lot of teams end up closing without, or they are rather amb ambiguous about. And you want to state how much money has been invested, um, by whom, and w over which time frame as well. And of course, uh, show dilution, right? Ownership percentage. Um, then uh, you'll want to move on to talking business and how much money you want, um, what it will be used for, what are the key milestones that, that you foresee in the future and uh, what uh, it will get them, right? And um, if you uh, have already part of that invest in, uh, investment committed, 
you'll want to um, make a statement of, of such. So let's talk about actual, um, actual design and actual uh, ways to convey the message. So I think that it's really important to, to make sure that digestibility is the key to your slides. So the first thing that, that you'll want to apply, or at least that, that I see across most great presentations is a 10, 20, 30 rule. So that means that you'll want to spread over, over 10 slides, you'll want to do less than 20 minutes, and you'll want to use 30 point font and upwards. You want to make it legible, make it simple, make it very obvious. You'll use, you'll you just remember that you're cramming all that in, all that information into your presentation and you'll want to make sure that, yes, although you have 10 slides, it doesn't mean that you'll want to use some small fonts and, 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 and cram everything in there. You just want to make sure that the person understands it in a second. You'll want to use the 555 rule, which means five lines per text per slide, five words per line, and never do more than five text heavy slides in a row. Legibility, I mean, I think that's a no brainer and, and something that, that we all some, somewhat know or, or keep present, but somewhat, somehow we don't. <laughs> I keep seeing this and, I, and, I, and it's, it's crazy that in this day and age, um, people still use a number of fonts together or they, they use, uh, uh, bad color combinations. They don't use gradients. They use um, uh, colors that don't contrast with the background. Secondly, simplicity. Let's talk about simplicity. So can we talk about one idea per slide? Let's boil down those big ideas and make sure that, that, that the user gets the, gets the slide as they see them. So you'll want to avoid wordy slides or jargon and small fonts that, uh, that only do you wrong. So you'll want to break down paragraphs into bullet points, communicate them, but keep them short and sweet. Um, the, la the second thing is, the last thing is about, about this part is that you'll want to keep the same, the same consistency across everything, right? So you keep the same margins. Same colors as well as two to three font, si font sizes and typefaces. You don't want to stray away from that. And, and if you've been paying attention to my presentation, you'll see that I have kept the same for every single slide. Same with colors, same with everything. Obviousness. <laughs> How explicit are your ideas? So your slides should be understood as a, as a, as a at a glance. And um, one test that uh, most marketers do, and I, I would definitely um, put it forward to all founders is to do the five second test. Show your slides to a stranger for five seconds and ask them if they get it. Do they get it? What is that they understand by it? Is there enough contrast? Um, make sure that you are explicit about what you're trying to get out of that slide. What is your goal and what are you trying to convey with it? Um, and that's, that's it in terms of, of simplicity. I think that uh, I wanted to show you how, maybe how I, I put it together because it was actually as simple as, uh, as one might think. And I think that a lot of people um, assume that uh, creating a pitch deck is, is something that that is uh, that entails a lot of uh, a lot of work. Yes, it entails a lot of a lot of uh, storytelling, which is uh, where you'll want to spend the most time. But in terms of of the actual structure, um, this presentation might have taken me maybe a um, couple hours maximum. Um, I want to give a quick shout out to uh, my to our designer Paolo who put our cover slide together and uh, doesn't allow me to uh, move any of the most important parts. So branding, for example, although uh, the my the branding is applied to every single slide, uh, Paolo, what he does is he locks every single um, uh, branding part. So, for example, like Sarah. Uh, Sarah parts, um, 
I can lock them or unlock them. I think I tried to unlock them earlier on. Um, so I don't break them, right? So one thing that's, uh, that's major about uh, pitch decks is exactly that, your branding. You want to keep it simple, but you'll want to keep it present. Uh, I think that one thing that a lot of teams do is exactly the opposite, and that is add their branding all over the place and to the point where it looks very convoluted and it just looks um, a little bit uh, too, um, yeah, just there's too much going on, right? So you, you'll want to ensure that it is there, but it's not taking up uh, everything. So in my case, for example, my slide um, keeps all our branding present. So you have my colors, as you see here, um, even in our in our lettering, we we'll have uh, our our different um, symbols and, and logos, and uh, it's it's all present, but it's very 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 uh, low key. Um, it's made so people take away their the key ideas. Uh, you'll see some really some of my um, I use some uh, elements that uh, look slightly complicated. So for example, I created um, this slide uh, in our um, sorry, Designer Pro product uh, and brought it in. And I basically had it in my assets. I keep most of my important assets saved here in components. Um, it's pretty easy. I, I just keep them for later there. So for example, I can add it to my assets as a component and it'll be there or I can just upload it. Um, secondly, I think that another thing that, another reason why creating this presentation was uh, extremely easy was because I was already using a template, right? So uh, Paolo kind of made my life a little simpler by, um, by putting this as a, by creating this as a team template. So every time that, that I access uh, such a template, um, it creates a copy for me. So basically your best copy is always there, but you're never overriding it. You always have a copy that becomes your own. So you don't have 80 copies laying around or the la your last copy is always here. So the, what your designer is creating is just there and uh, it's quick and easy for me to to work on it, um, as a matter of fact, uh, I am lying a little bit here um, because I saw that Paolo also used um, a presentation that, uh, that was uh, already there. I've seen it in the past, somewhere around here. Um, although now it looks very different from, um, from the original one, I am pretty sure I could bet money that uh, this presentation, maybe I can zoom in a little bit, apologies for that, is somewhere in here. I believe it's the investor pitch deck or financial pitch deck. Let's look at it. Uh, so this one, but I think that it is, uh, let's click out of it. This one. No, it's uh, well, it doesn't really matter. Let's uh, let, let's let's go let's go into one and, and understand uh, why I'm saying that that it's uh, that it's super easy to to do it. Let's let's open this one. I think it, it it's actually the one. So you'll definitely recognize a couple of slides. Let me just put it in. Let me. Um, this is the, the, the original pitch deck. I will put uh, the problem, solution, how it works. So you'll see a very similar structure already, right? Um, and this actually starts fairly simple. All you have to do is change this and all my, everything's already done for me in terms of, of my branding. Um, oh, uh, 
let's tackle some of the questions because I know that I'm already running out of time and I see that uh, people are leaving comments. So let's, uh, let's go into that. Okay. okay so some comments. No questions, but I see comments. Does anyone have any any, any particular questions about uh, pitch decks and how to create them? Uh, what should be what should we be looking out for? I'm very curious to see if uh, if I can answer any any of uh, any of your questions because I would be very eager to do so. Maybe I can show my face instead of uh, the screen. So I don't see any, any further questions. So if you don't have any further questions, um, that's quite all right. I'm sure some, some might pop up. If you do come up with any questions, we're always here in the chat. We're always here uh, available by email. My email is alfonsos at sarah.com. And I would be very happy to uh, walk you, give you a walkthrough of uh, how I created it in depth, or if you, are not a user or if you are a user and you want to get better at creating pitch decks, uh, I'm always here to help. Um, because you took part in this, uh, in this webinar, I wanted to also give you a little tip uh, or a, some insider info. Rather, uh, you'll have a big discount, a 50% discount on any annual plan with uh, code Easter egg. Um, any time that you uh, purchase anything from this point forward until next week. So I wanted to thank you all again for coming to the webinar and, uh, and listening and uh, being eager to learn about this. Um, and I hope to see you all very soon in the product and in the chat. Have a wonderful evening wherever or wonderful day, wherever it is that you're watching from and hope to see you very soon. Bye-bye.